I'm Andy and welcome to my channel about crypto. Well, as we know, bear markets generally suck. They're nowhere near as fun as bull markets where there's, there are opportunities to make money pretty much every day. But at the same time, it's important to remember that bear markets present great opportunities. And if you place your holdings right, or if you keep an eye on correct projects during the bear market, you're likely to benefit a lot during an upcoming bull market. So in today's video, I want to talk about NFT projects, which I think have the most potential to, to essentially grow in the next bull market. So projects which are currently massively down from their previous all-time highs, which for the most part are already, already well-proven projects. So they did really well in, well, relatively short history of NFTs. Or projects which are maybe slightly less well known, but I think they have part particularly good pot potential because of various reasons, which I'll be describing, of course, in this video. Of course, none of the information presented here is financial advice. And I think it's especially important to remember that NFTs never really had a proper bear market yet. With an exception of CryptoPunks and maybe one or two other projects, well, NFTs really started gaining traction early last year, early 2021. So they've been pretty much in a bull run until, well, until the current market cycle finished. So we are now in a situation where we don't exactly know which projects will stand the test of time and which ones will recover in the next bull market. And while I think that the projects I'll be talking about have particularly large potential, of course, there's absolutely no guarantee that they, they will survive. There are a couple there which I would be extremely surprised if they fail, but at the end of the day, nothing is ever guaranteed. I'll be talking about 14 different projects in no particular order, but essentially just projects I am bullish on. The prices vary a lot from like 0 .7, 0 0.07 ETH to around 17 ETH. So there's a huge spread in prices. They dipped in some cases, probably about 50, 60%. In other cases, over 90%. And I'll be talking about that when I'll be discussing every project. And I think those projects present really nice spread in terms of what they actually represent, what are uh, their utilities and so on. So I hope that everyone will find something interesting within those projects. Of course, as always, make sure that you do your own research. Don't just jump into any pro project just because. Uh, it's always important to, to figure out why you exactly want to invest in that particular project. First one I wanted to mention is Collider Craftworks and their Cypher collection. So that's the first Cypher, so basically those 3D avatars. If you haven't heard about this project, it's probably because it launched at a rather unfortunate point in time. It's been in the making for quite a long time. I was whitelisted for it, I think, in January or February, and they only minted in June this year. And of course, in June, the market was in a really, really shitty place. I think if they were minting in a full-on NFT bull market, this project would do incredibly well because there was a lot of hype around it. But unfortunately, well, the timing is as it is. So the mint price was also really high. It was 0.5 ETH, which is probably part of the reason why the project struggled a bit. So the current floor price is actually just above the mint price. It did hit around 2 ETH at some point recently, then it dipped, but it's... It's a project I'm incredibly bullish on. So basically, if you invest in any of those NFTs, you get this cipher. So those ciphers are those 3D models, 3D avatars, and you can also see how the whole model looks like. So this one is particularly funky. Uh, there are five different factions, so they are not all as crazy and colorful as this one. So everyone can find something interesting. But what I really like about this project is that it was created by a proper game studio. So if we look at their website, they, well, their website is really, really professional. It's worth reading the light paper. There's quite a bit of information there. They've been recommended and backed by many, many influencers, of course. But what's really cool is, I will first of all, scroll down to, these are the games this team has been working on. So we have some really, really big titles here. It's a really big professional studio. I think they have something like 90 staff members. And it's not just a PFP. 
it will be actually a fully rigged 3D model created in Unreal Engine. So you will be able, there is, will be a possibility to port those models into other environments created in, in Unreal Engine. And they're creating the Mosh Pit, which is like their game where there will be a tournament happening. I think that's planned for Q4, if I remember correctly, or maybe even Q3. No, I think Q3. There will be visual wallet where you will be able to essentially create and modify your, your avatar. And that's coming in Q4. I think the project is really, really cool. There are a lot of airdrops coming. So I think the first airdrop is supposed to be on the 29th of July, if I remember correctly. So we'll be getting some headgear. Then following airdrops will be various types of weapons and so on. So there will be essentially six airdrops between now and the end of the year. And they have also some really good partnerships with Neo Tokyo and Journey. So yeah, massively bullish on this one. I think it's a really, really cool project. And I'll be perfectly happy to have an avatar like this in the in the metaverse. So I'll be really, I'm really interested to see where this project will go. Uh, but I, have, I think they have a ton of potential and the quality of their work is absolutely amazing. Then another one of my favorites is The Other Side. So that's one of the projects created by Yuga Labs, so creators of Borde Piacht Club. And I'm sure most of you are really familiar with it. Essentially, there are deeds for plots of land in, in the other side, which is Yuga Labs Metaverse. I took part in, in the first trip, so the first tech demo, and it looks absolutely mind-blowing. Yuga Labs partnered with a company called Improbable, which does essentially creates a really immersive, large-scale virtual environment. So there were like four and a half thousand people there in that space. And you could talk to others. You could hear conversations happening around you. Uh, everything was working really, really well. And I was just through the browser. To be honest, I was on the road th that day. So I literally had my laptop connected to my phone's hotspot. So even though my connection, internet connection was absolutely tragic, I was still able to participate and it was really, really cool. I'm massively bullish on this one. I think this is probably at the moment the closest thing we have happening to like the proper metaverse. And yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what what they will do. They're developing the project in the open, so there will be those trips happening on a regular basis, so we'll be able to see and participate in the development of the project, see the, how it's all growing, how it's all changing. So yeah, I think it's really cool. Floor price, okay, it's not a cheap project currently, but bear in mind that around mean time, those plots of land were trading for around seven, eight ETH. So the price is not too bad. And also if we look at, I mean, of course there's a huge variety of those plots of land, but especially if we look at chemical goo, so plots of land which were airdropped to mutant ape holders. They're a bit more rare, so of course the most rare ones are biogenic swamp plots of land, which, which were airdropped to um, bored ape uh, holders. These were the ones that everyone could mint. And chemical goo, as you can see, the floor price is actually not far off the floor price of the whole collection. So I think especially these are really great value for money at the moment. Then, since we are talking about Bored Ape ecosystem, I'll mention Mutant Ape Yacht Club. Yes, I appreciate it, 17 ETH, and well, if someone has 17 ETH to spend on an NFT, they probably don't need recommendation, they know what they're doing with their money. But this is the kind of project which, at the moment, yes, it's very, very expensive, but it dipped to around 13 ETH when we had that big crypto crash a few weeks ago, when Bitcoin went down to like 17 and a half K. And if there is another big crash coming, and I don't think we are anywhere near being out of bear market yet. We had a pretty decent week or so, but the last couple of days, well, Bitcoin started trading down a bit. If there is another crash, this price may dip quite significantly. If it goes down to something like, I don't know, 12, 10 ETH, it would be still, of course, a lot of money but it could be potentially a really, really, really good buying opportunity. I mean, for a long time, mutant apes were holding around 25 ETH and above. 
at some point they hit around over 40 ETH floor price. So I think there's a ton of potential here. And as always, well, Board Ape Yacht Club is like the ultimate NFT collection. Whether it will stay always this way, probably not. Probably eventually someone will take over, but it's it is at the moment, and I'm guessing for a while it will it will be the pinnacle of NFTs in terms of what people want when they are buying into into those projects. And then of course people start looking at okay, well, I cannot afford spending, I don't know, 80 or 100 ETH on a board ape. What can I buy? Well, then the next one is mutant ape. That's still really expensive. But then things like, for example, other side crop up. It's like, well, that's still part of that ecosystem. Different part, but still made by the same company, still very close links to to Board Ape. It's not completely separate project. And of course, that's much more affordable. So that's why I think we'll be driving the prices up significantly in the future. Then we have Neo Tokyo, citizens and outer citizens. Project created by Alex Becker and Elliot Trades really focus on crypto gaming, everything crypto gaming and metaverse related. And I firmly believe that next crypto bull run and next NFT bull run will be largely about gaming and, and metaverse. And if you want to be on the forefront of what's happening in that space, Neo Tokyo is, is the place to be. It dipped a lot from its all-time high, so citizens are now around 9 ETH. They were, I think, around 40, 50 ETH at the peak. And of course, that's, again, quite an expensive collection. But then on the other hand, we have outer citizens, which still give you access to a lot of... They don't give you the same access and same benefits as, as the citizens, but they are still the next be best thing, if that makes sense. And the floor price is far more affordable. It's just under 1 ETH. And this at the peak was around 12 ETH. So I think when crypto gaming bull market is fully back on, I think this floor price will absolutely skyrocket. I would expect it to hit the previous all-time high or go above it. So that could be potentially like 15x gain. Another project which probably doesn't need much introduction is the Dodge Pound. And I really like it because, first of all, I like the fact that they're doing something cool, something good. They are building the biggest dog shelter in, in East Africa, which, I mean, is the kind of thing I'm, I will quite happily back. But also it's one of the very early NFT collections. This project was launched in sort of spring 2021, when NFTs were only really, sta only really started gaining traction. And floor price is pretty decent, 0.3 ETH. At some point, the floor was around 3 ETH or so. So again, if it goes back to the previous all-time high, that's, that's about 10x. I think it's a really cool project. Maybe they diluted their message a bit. They're doing too many different things at the moment, but I think it should be able to go back to its previous all-time high and above it. And yeah, I'm happy to, to be part of it. I, I still very much like it. Another one is OK Bears. And this one is sort of, well, on one hand, a lot of people are saying, oh, they're just, board ape uh, ripoff just with bears and on solana blockchain but at the same time they got a lot of attention from many influencers and they got a lot of traction floor price is holding pretty steadily around 100 soul it sort of moves between like 80 and 110 120 but most of the time it stays around 100 it was above 200 at some point so again it's not the cheapest project to get into that would be around three and a half thousand dollars at today's prices but this is sort of board ape equivalent on solana ecosystem and i'm not saying this because it's a ripoff of the artwork but i'm saying is that this is like their top collection solana's top collection so i think there's pretty good chance that it may do really, really well because, well, if it continues to hold the status, then yeah, the prices should go back above 200 sol and, and higher. So I think it's a pretty cool one. To be honest, I personally actually really like the artwork. Uh, community seems to be really, really strong as well. So I think it, this one is definitely worth keeping an eye on, especially if, again, if we have another crash and the price is deep or just simply prices of crypto deep a lot, 
if let's say Bitcoin goes down, well, other coins, including Solana, will dip proportionally more. The percentage they will dip will be higher. So collections like this have, even if the price won't change much, well, it will be much cheaper if you are buying it with fiat currency, if that makes sense. Next, I would like to talk about BFF friendship bracelets. And that's a women-led project. And it's a pretty interesting one. The price is relatively low. It was at some point above one ETH, maybe even closer to two ETH. The bracelets are basically like the core collection. And depending on how long you hold the bracelet and what you participate in, you are collecting those charms. As you can see, some of them have it, some of them don't. And having a bracelet gives you an access to things like various allow lists. And for example, recently there was the um, really popular collection Moonbird Oddities. Floor price, even right now in the bear market, is like 1.7 ETH. And they had hundreds um, widely spots or hundreds of those oddities to raffle amongst the, the members of their community. So there are some potentially really valuable benefits of, of being part of it. But also, if you look at people behind this project, it's absolutely insane how many really high profile people, how many really high profile women are in it. You have plenty of celebrities. You have a lot of really successful entrepreneurs, people with massive connections. And I think there's like hundreds of them that founded the project. And if you imagine collectively how much potential they have, how many connections they have, how much capital is behind them, well, they can do some really, really impressive stuff. So it would be really interesting to see where this project goes, but yeah, I'm really bullish on it. And they also have this other collection called U by BFF, and they are essentially just PFPs. And those PFPs, as you can see, the prices are much more affordable than, than the other collection. So that's one of those projects where I said that, well, the price is actually similar to mint price. So you could quite easily get one or a few of those. And depending on the traits of the particular PFP you have, you may be eligible for various perks. So for example, some merch or some jewelry or some discounts and so on. And a lot of those perks are about to be announced. Only a few of them were so far. So yeah, pretty cool project, I think. Mm -hmm. Both parts of it, the bracelets and the U PFPs. So definitely worth checking out and quite affordable to get into. Another one, continuing the theme of women-led projects, is World of Women. And essentially, that's like the board ape equivalent amongst women-led projects. So this is the biggest, as in the most expensive collection uh, created by women-only projects. So at the peak, I think that was like 15 ETH floor price. So it dipped quite a bit, but still holding quite, quite high. And they also have secondary collection, which is World of Women Galaxy. And this one is again, much more affordable. Again, similar logic as with Border Ape and Mutant Ape. Definitely worth checking out. I think this is one of those projects that will just continue holding really strong just because of its status. So, so definitely worth, worth checking it out. And then the final two projects I want to mention. One is the Central Land. And I just broadly wanted to mention all land-related projects. I have really mixed feelings about them. I'm not sure whether investing in land is such a great idea with the exception of the other side. And that's purely because we don't know which ones of those metaverses will be really successful. I mean, spending two ETH on something that may not really be used much in the future is it's a bit questionable. If you ever try to spend a bit of time in the central land, you probably know that it's not exactly the most immersive, not the most impressive environment to be in. Well, while at the same time, what I've seen already from, from the other side is that, well, that's completely, completely different story, completely different experience. So this is just not necessarily recommending this particular project, but sort of keeping an eye on various land NFTs and potentially investing in them, depending how strongly you feel about about them and how much potential do you think they have. And the central land, well, it seems to be the mo most popular one or certainly among the most pop popular ones. So 
potentially worth worth buying, but I have somewhat mixed feelings about land NFTs in general. And then the final one is something that my wife is really into, and it's the memes or the memes, whatever you want to however you want to pronounce it, collection by Punk6529. Usually I'm not particularly keen on collections created by Bored Ape number whatever or Punk number something. But in this particular case, well, Punk6529 is sounds like a really, really clever guy. He's certainly onto something. And yeah, it's an interesting collection. I recommend that you read the thread. I'll put a link to it in the, in the description. Uh, there's a thread on on Twitter about this project, quite a long one. And there will be many more of those uh, memes coming. Floor prices vary now from around 0.1, just under 0.1 ETH to around 1.7. At some point it was around 2 ETH. So they do vary a lot. There will be many more of those memes coming. And yeah. There is something interesting there. And if you look at 6529 original collection gradients, well, that has floor price of 25 ETH. And if you look at, at activity, granted, it's only 101 items. But if you look at activity, though, they were actually selling or are selling for something like 18, 25, 15 ETH and so on. So, yeah, I'm not saying that this collection will reach the same price. Of course it won't because there is much, much larger volume, but I think it's definitely worth keeping an eye on it. And my wife is doing quite well flipping those and buying them back. And yeah, she's, she's really keen on it. And I think it's worth checking it out. I think there is something there. So yeah. So I think that's it for, for this video. It's been quite a long one anyway. I've been talking a lot, <laughs> but yeah, I think these projects are, are the ones with, with the most potential, the ones I'm most bullish on. So yeah, as always, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.